Hello, Internet. Welcome back to AI Dungeon Cataclysm. We are, uh, in the last episode, we met a woman called Gwen during the zombie apocalypse. We're currently in a mall trying to find our way to the gun shop so that we can arm ourselves against the zombie menace. We did meet a survivor. Her name is Gwen. She was suffering from chicken pox and several <laughs> injuries. Uh, we treated her injuries to the best of our ability. And uh, we left her in a back room office so that she will remain safe while we go for help. So that's where we're at. I am enjoying the game a little bit more than I s sort of expected to. Um, yeah, hopefully everybody is <laughs> having a good time. So, okay, we snuck out of the thing. We passed some mannequins. It seems the zombies are moving slower due to all the, the, the damage they're suffering. You walk around the corner. Hmm... Oh, and run smack. You run right into a zombie. Why not? Let's spice things up. We've only fought one zombie so far. You quickly push the woman behind you in an attempt. No, see, that's, um, you, you still think that I'm with Gwen. That's not, that's not right. So we'll just skip that part. Um, you quickly push the zombie away, but you can tell it's ready to fight. And it's, it has an apostrophe because it's, uh, <laughs> it is. Okay, um, you know what? So I'm going to pull the actual description of a zombie from Cataclysm and put that into the text adventure. Okay, so what I've chosen to do is use the fat zombie description. So, stumbling as it moves, this corpse of an overweight human regards you with an empty black gaze. So that is the directly from Cataclysm, uh, and we'll see what the AI thinks of that. You look around desperately and notice a small door to the left of the front counter. It seems like it could lead to a supply room, but and but you're going to take that risk. I don't love that. Um, you start towards the room, but the fat zombie grabs your arm and stops you. Hmm. It claws at you trying to attack. Let's see what it says. See if it remembers that we still have a crowbar. I'm not sure if the game is that good. You kick the zombie in the face and run into the supply room. The zombie tries to follow you, but slams into the door and then falls to the ground. Okay, um, let's do... Um, while the... No, we have to use a verb. Attack the zombie with your crowbar while it is on the ground, I think will, will be the, the most prudent thing. You run at the zombie and shove your crowbar into its skull, twisting it and killing it. You pull out the crowbar and immediately hear some movement from the supply room. Did we open? You slam into the, it slams into the door. You run into the supply room. So I'm inside the supply room. Look around the supply room. If there's a zombie in here, we would like to know that before it chomps us. You look around the room and notice a small door on the right side of the back wall. Behind the counter is a shotgun and a box of shells. You check the shotgun, finding it jammed with feathers. So, great example of how the AI is not perfect. Uh, clear the feathers out of the shotgun and begin loading it with shells, I think. We, we, we have a gun now. That's great. That's a start. After grabbing a few shells, you go back to the main store. You cautiously peek around the corner and see no one. You go back and grab Gwen, pulling her along behind you. I wouldn't have done that, but the AI seems to want us to be with people. Gwen is injured. She needs our help to move. I was going to leave her there. Okay, Gwen is having a hard time walking. Well, because of her injuries. You give her... No, I want to keep the shotgun. I think if we give the shotgun to the NPC one, NPCs in Cataclysm are terrible. So, you know, I would never do that in the game. Um, and two, Gwen is very injured, so it makes more sense for me to protect her with the gun. You help her walk, but keep the shotgun ready in your hands. Hmm. In case... No, just, just that's fine. We'll just go with in our hands. We are armed now. Uh, I'm not sure where we put our crowbar. You enter the next room and find a dead end of the world type feel. Okay, let's try this again. That's a terrible sentence. You enter the courtyard and walk around for a bit, but no one attacks. You sit down to rest and notice Jen Gwen's injuries. Um, what do I, What do you mean I notice them? You notice 
that Gwen's injuries are bleeding through her bandages. How about how about that? Maybe she's just she's bleeding through the bandage we put on. She probably has a hasn't had a proper bandage in days. You rip off some of your shirts. How many shirts am I wearing to use as new bandages? Can you walk? You ask. I'll try. Okay. Uh, why don't we just let the AI run for a second, see if it gives us any more indicator? Like apparently we're in a like in in the courtyard now. Which okay. Both walk around the courtyard for a bit as you talk about what to do next. I think we should try to get out of the mall and look for a car, but I'm scared there will be a lot of zombies. How about that, Gwen? What do you think of that, Gwen? You remember the displays of sport utility vehicles earlier and decide to risk looking there now that the courtyard is relatively free of zombies. Where where did I where where did I see SUVs? Okay. Um let's say on the floor below, you can see one of the SUVs. Maybe I have to say sport utility vehicle. It might not know what an SUV is. See one of the sport utility vehicles on display and wonder if it has gas. Because I played Left 4 Dead 2, and I know that the display vehicles need gas. Looks like you'll be driving a Jeep after all. Okay. Do you think that SUV has gas in it. See what Gwen thinks? I think so. Gwen says they're big and heavy. Do you think we can tip it over? Probably not, but it wouldn't be nice to have a pushover. I don't, I don't know what that means. We'll just get rid of that. I think so. Gwen says that makes way more sense. AI. Um, again, this is uh, worth noting AI dungeon. There are two AIs. There is a, uh, basic AI and then there's an advanced AI. The basic AI is free. That's what you will experience. That's what I'm doing right now. If you pay for AI Dungeon, it's a subscription model. Um, I think if you go to like the middle tier plan, it's probably like $9.99 a month or something like that. You get access to the higher tier uh, AI. I'm still debating if I want to purchase AI Dungeon or not. I, I've enjoyed the experience so far, but for the most part, it's not. It's a little rough around the edges. And I just, I don't like subscription models. I'm not sure I can afford to spend money on a text adventure, basically, is what it comes down to, which is really sad and says a lot about my finances, but okay. Um, so Gwen says you think she thinks it has gas. Do you think you can make it to the car, to the vehicle? We don't want to say car, then it'll maybe think we have a car or something as well. I'll try, Gwen says. You offer her a hand and help her stand. She's in a lot of pain and grunts slightly from the effort. Okay. You're going to be okay. We just have to get out of here. She'll she'll be fine. She's 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 going to be fine. I just imagine she has some some damage. She'll be okay. You consider your next move. You could try to open the SUV's door, but the keys are in the ignition. Okay. So we're going to get rid of that because it's on the lower floor. You consider your next move. Uh you and Gwen Walk together until you find stairs that lead to the ground floor. You start down them, but and we're just gonna let the AI fill something in here and see what see what see what the AI thinks. But hear noise up above. You both quickly go back to the stairs and try to make it back to the No, let's just try that again. You start down them, but you hear a noise above. You look up and see a man with a shotgun coming down the stairs. You turn and run back up the stairs. Okay, again, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand. You, but you realize that the stairs are a little too close together. <laughs> what? I'm pretty sure there's like a legal standard for what size and spacing stairs are supposed to be. You look up and see the top of an escalator, and realize you should probably take it. You find it kind of funny that the escalator is still working despite the apparent zombie apocalypse we're gonna capitalize that because that's a, a why not uh you help gwen to the escalator and you both start slowly moving down she's injured an escalator probably would help her move a little bit as you reach the bottom you feel something hit your back you turn to look back and see that a zombie has grabbed gwen 
put the shotgun against the zombie's chest and pull the trigger. We're not wearing any ear protection, which is not great for a shotgun that close. Thumbs down? You decide to pull your knife? No. See, I don't... See, why would I... I don't have a knife. You aim the shotgun at the zombie's chest and pull the trigger. You are extremely lucky. The silver 8-gauge buckshot enters the center mass of the zombie's chest, causing it to fall backwards. Isn't an 8-gauge shotgun, like, enormous? Right? Like, shotguns, it's it's backwards. Like, smaller numbers are bigger, right? I shot a 10-gauge when I was a teenager, and it, like... It messed... It scared the crap out of me. Um, I had only ever really shot 22s, and then my mentor handed me a 10 gauge so he could laugh at me because it's like an enormous gun. Um, so I thought smaller gauge was bigger. So that's a bit interesting. I also don't know why it's silver, um, but okay. Causing it to fall backwards. Ask, uh, are you okay? Uh, did it hurt you? See if she is any further injured. Gwen is a mess right now. Chicken pox and injuries. I'm fine. You just surprised me. That's all. You're happy to hear this. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay. You and Gwen reach the bottom of the escalator. <sighs> there are zombies um, scattered around the mall, but you think you might be able to reach uh, the SUV. It's a long sentence. Oh, and I left it open so the AI plugged in without trouble. You see the car and your spirits start to rise. Next to it, however, is a man with a shopping cart full of goods. He looks sad. You keep trying to insert random humans in here. And Cataclysm really doesn't um, do humans. The two of you start moving towards the SUV. I got to start putting periods because it's going to keep, yeah, when it starts to rain. Yeah, see, doesn't doesn't make sense. You look up, see dark clouds. No, we're in a mall. We're, we're in a mall. Start towards the SUV. Period. How about that? Just put a period, and then we'll hit enter so the AI generates something. It is a little tricky working with the AI, but for the most part, it, it's fine. It's, uh, I don't see the Jeep, Gwen says. It's right there. Right in front of us. I don't know. Also, sorry if I forgot to read any lines. I'm trying to read every line, but sometimes my brain says, oh, I read it, so why, does, why do I need to read it out loud? You look where Gwen is pointing, and sure enough, the large SUV is parked right in front of the entrance to the escalator. Let's go. Okay. Um, help Gwen into the passenger seat of the SUV. I got to start putting periods. I got to do that. How's the AI doing? Pretty good. There's definitely room for improvement. Anything you'd like to add? Um, although I... Enjoy the AI. There's still a lot of room for growth. How about that? Pretty good. You open the door for Gwen and she gets in, closing the door behind her. You head around to the driver's side and get in. After starting the engine, you notice a fuel fu uh, bleh, brain, a fuel gauge that says full. You start the engine. Uh, we're going to need... Look around for big glass windows. We're going to need a, a way to, to plow out of here. And uh, you pop the clutch a little too hard. The SUV starts to move. The engine growls to life. You see zombies milling around in front of you. Okay. Uh, let's go to story. You throw... No. You... Hmm. Gun the engine... Racing the SUV towards the zombies. You hit a few and they, I don't know, bounce off the windshield. Gwen screams in terror. I mean, that's fine. Let's see what the AI says after that. Gwen screams. Sure. I mean, natural reaction. You start to pull out of the parking lot. No, we're not in the parking lot. You got to stop with this AI. You hit the accelerator to the floor and start to make your way out. Nope, same thing with the parking lot. Okay, so we're just going to keep filling in the blanks. This is the part that bums me out about AI Dungeon, is that I have to feed a lot of this narration myself because the AI is just not coherent enough to form like lengthy story threads. Uh, and it doesn't maintain enough information. Like I think we even pinned, we're in a mall. Um, 
and it continually thinks we're we're somewhere else, which is pretty pretty uh, not even like a anno- like it's annoying. It's not frustrating. It doesn't make me angry. It's just kind of disappointing. Um, you drive around the mall trying to avoid running over any zombies. You look around for big glass windows that you could drive through. Uh, which is a weird sentence to say, but I don't know how else we're going to get the vehicle out of the co- out of the out of the shop. You spot a store that has a big window along with a door wide open. You slam on the brakes and swing the steering wheel to the right, aiming the front of the vehicle for the opening. Okay, it's going to think we're driving into a store. You can see through. You can see. Uh, it's dark outside. It already told us it's dark. You can see dim moonlight through the glass windows and know that you can escape that way. You gun the engine and race towards the glass. Let's see what it says. Maybe it'll put this together and it'll understand what we're saying. You can't avoid the last zombie who jumps in front of the vehicle. The front of the SUV slams into it and you both go flying to the ground. No, I'm I'm in I'm in the car. Okay. Front of the vehicle slams into it. Uh, and your windshield is suddenly obscured. No, your vision. Your vision is suddenly obscured by the gore on the windshield. How about that? Uh, Gwen screams again, and the SUV uh, slams through the glass windows. How about that? See, because at this point, I feel like I'm writing the story. I don't feel like... See, it just tips over, huh? Okay, we'll roll with it. Um, But I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm supplying the bulk of the story at this point. The AI is not doing very much for me. Basically, another thing is that AI Dungeon always wants to ruin your day. So, like, even though we've been in control of the vehicle the whole time and everything... Um, we are now out of control, which is fine. We have gore on our windshield. We can't really see... You lose control of the vehicle. The SUV tips over onto its side. Vehicle comes to a stop with you now lying face down on top of it. Now, why would I be on top of the vehicle? Even if I got thrown from the vehicle, all it did was tip over. It doesn't really... um, Okay. You fight to maintain control and right the vehicle, but fail. The SUV slides to a halt uh, on its side. Are we going to die? You're thrown clear. No, I'm not thrown clear. doesn't make sense. We're not going that fast. We're in a mall. We're in an SUV. You and Gwen are in the back of the vehicle, now upside down. See, that makes more sense. Why would we be ejected from a low-speed collision? You look around and see that you're both trapped, and the first step to getting out is to remove yourself from the vehicle. Okay. Um, try. We're in the back. Try to open the, the trunk from the inside. Maybe we can maybe we can pop the back latch. Basically, every vehicle has that um, that lever that can pop a trunk open. Okay, you try to pry open the trunk from inside, but it's stuck. You slam on the brakes. No, see, doesn't doesn't make sense. Um, you pull the little lever that opens the trunk. It uh, well, I'm not going to tell it it opens. Let's see what it says. See if it see if it goes with it. You pull the lever and the trunk opens. A wave of relief washes over you. The vehicle's spare tire swings out from the back. You quickly move to grab the tire and pull yourself out. Help Gwen climb out the rear of the vehicle. So we'll help her out as well. Presumably the zombies are pressing in around us, coming to attack. You pull, climb out of the rear of the hatchback. It's definitely not a hatchback. Pull Gwen with you. You stand next to the vehicle as it slowly tips over. It's lights come on and the engine idles. I don't know why that would happen, but okay. We have to run, we tell Gwen, because, again, zombies are approaching us. Okay, AI Dungeon, you just asked me. I'm not doing this right now. You pull Gwen to her feet, and the two of you quickly take off into the night. You hear the pop of gunshots in quick succession behind you. Okay. Uh, You ignore the gunshots and are surprised that Gwen is able to to run with her injuries because she's she's pretty injured 
You both race down the sidewalk away from the mall. Looking over your shoulder, you see the blue, the blur of blue lights headed directly towards you. <sighs> see, it's inserting humans. I wanted this to be zombies. Uh, let's let's add the zombies because it doesn't seem interested in in this. Zombies are following you as well. Some of them even appear to be running because we we have uh, we have the runners in in Cataclysm. The blue lights appear to be attached to a. We're just gonna say attached to. See what the AI supplies us. The blue lights appear to be attached to a moving vehicle. And you need to get away from it as quickly as possible. Gwen has slowed to a halt and leans heavily on you. Go, just go, she gasps. The zombies are rapidly approaching, as is the blue-lighted vehicle. You look at Gwen and know she can't keep up with you because she's injured. Her face is covered in a mask of blood. I don't want to leave you, you say. You say frowning. See what she says. That's a lot for the AI to take in. Hopefully that's okay. Gwen smiles at you and leans in to hug you. You embrace her warmly, but you know that your time together has come to an end. Uh, why, why would I have a, a spare tire? You reach out for her hand. Okay. Uh, I mean, we can keep that, I guess. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll add that to the next section. You reach out and take her hand. You're uh, surprised to feel so frightened and worried for her, but you know you can't stay. She shoves you away as she collapses to the ground. You run. See, see what you have to say to this. this is a sad, sad goodbye. You hear the sounds of gunfire growing closer and know the zombies have caught up with you. You turn to face your pursuers as you run, but see the horde has passed you by. You keep running. Okay, so the horde, let's say, um, has descended on Gwen, which is sad. But um, you hear Gwen scream as the horde overtakes her. You feel a sudden pang of guilt and anguish over leaving the woman behind. Desperate, uh, hmm. You're grateful to have escaped the mall, but you know that it has cost you a small part of your humanity. How about that? Sad, sad thing. You continue running. Behind you, zombies and vehicle burn brightly. Okay, we're at 25 minutes. Let's say that this is the conclusion of our story. Our character started out in the mall food court. We we got ourselves some burgers. We made some um, a crowbar. We got ourselves a shotgun, uh, and we found a survivor. We attempted to save this survivor. We attempted to treat her injuries and bring her with us. We even had an escape plan, but things went wrong as they always do, and it ended with Gwen being left behind. And um, now you're now us, our character has to forever suffer the guilt knowing that he left someone behind. The zombie apocalypse is still occurring. And uh, yeah, seems like a, a, a decent place to end the story. You uh, slink through the darkness, knowing that your world will never be the same. Um, I don't want to belabor the point about feeling bad about Gwen. Um, some small part of you... No. Hmm. How do we wrap this up? What's a good... I'm a writer. What do you do? <laughs> How do you wrap this up? Tears stream down your cheeks at the thought of the poor woman you left behind. You have left behind. You know that she's dead, consumed by the monsters in the darkness. As you weep... Ah, uh, no. You struggle to keep your weeping quiet, but find it difficult to control the uh, series of emotions tearing at your insides. The only thing to do now is to head towards your home and hope 
that you can weather the storm that is the zombie apocalypse. So a little grandiose, but that, that, that'll be our, our summation there. You slink through the darkness knowing that your world will never be the same. Tears stream down your cheeks at the thought of the poor woman you've left behind. You know that she's dead, consumed by the monsters in the darkness. You struggle to keep your weeping quiet, but find it difficult to control the series of emotions tearing at your insides. The only thing to do now is to head towards your home and hope that you can weather the storm that is the zombie apocalypse. You have no idea what the future may hold, but the only thing you do know is that you need to run. And and we'll end it there. I don't like this last line. So that is our story, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, these two episodes have taught you that uh, AI Dungeon, although pretty interesting and, and can do a lot, it does have some limitations. Largely, though, I enjoyed this experience, and hopefully you had a nice time as well. I know I'm not a voice actor. I know my reading can be a little bit questionable. And anytime you type something, it's so hard to read as you type out loud. Um, it's just something in my brain as I'm trying to read it out loud. It just doesn't work. Plus, uh, you know, I tend to speak a lot faster than people type. So there's that. But anyway, I think that's a decent place to wrap this particular story. I'm interested in doing more AI Dungeon in the future, but I'm not sure how much we will do on the channel. For now, though, thank you. If you enjoyed the content, please leave me a comment. Uh, I really, really don't get a lot of views on, on YouTube, which is not a super big deal, but it makes it very difficult to know what kind of content to make. If people leave me comments and say, hey, I like this, make more of this, then it gives me an idea of what my audience is looking for. So if you liked it, let me know you liked it. If you didn't like it, let me know you didn't like it and tell me why you didn't like it or why you did like it. So yeah, everybody, that's a wrap for this particular episode of AI Dungeon. Thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you had a good time. Hopefully this was enjoyable. I will, I could have been more random. I could have had a little bit more fun with it, but I mostly enjoyed the experience. So I'll be back with more content in the near future and I will see you in the next episode.